This is obviously a huge fight. You've been no stranger to moments like this. Just uh, when you got Kayla Harrison's name on this card, what was your first reactions? You know, I didn't really, I didn't know who they were going to have me fighting. I, we had been calling, 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 and just seeing who there was because it had been a while, and I was wanting to get back in there. And I saw a lot of people getting scheduled. A lot of the girls were already having fights coming up, and I was thinking, who else is there, you know? Um, we saw 300 was getting full uh, with all the announcements. And, um, you know, I think one time in passing, uh, my manager was like, you never know. I mean, it could be Kayla, and which isn't something I always kind of thought maybe at some point in my, you know, in martial arts career that it possibly could happen, but really wasn't anything that I really actually thought, you know, would be close or, or really come to fruition. But um, when they called, and that was the first I heard of it, was about probably an hour before everybody else heard about it, and I was excited. Why did you decide to bring Chris Cyborg in for this camp? How did you find that beneficial, given that they kind of have different stances and different styles? Yeah. You know, having another girl that's strong and my size and competed at the top level is always going to be a good training partner. So um, it's obviously she didn't come in to just stand as a righty and try and throw bombs or anything like that, but she's a very well-rounded fighter. And it was, you know, I have great training partners at home. I always have. I've, I've been very blessed with being able to have good training partners and a good camp and a good team. Um, but to have another female that's my size and of a, you know, a strong, um, physique and give me that feel was great. Um, I have nothing but positive things to say about uh, training with her. And okay, well, so let's get this one out of the way now. Uh, Ronda Rosie has released this book and she's made a lot of revelation. She said she was concussed when she fought you, uh, had many concussions before. She should be known as the greatest fighter ever, et cetera, et cetera. Um, what's just your reaction when you hear this? Do you feel like she's trying to take away from your win all these years later? Uh, do you think this is accurate? Just give us your thoughts. Well, so everything I say, which I'm sure people will just take parts of what I'm about to say and make it sound how you guys want. I say this all out of respect. In order to have a big upset like that fight was, you have to have a dominant champion. So without her being so dominant, then I couldn't have been able to have such an upset. But with that being said, I was the better fighter. I was the better fighter that night. And every... I mean, every fighter at this point, if you've made a career of fighting, you've had a concussion at some point. You go back and look at some of my boxing fights and some of the things that I've done, I've definitely had some concussions. Um, so I'll never sit here and use that as an excuse for any loss. And I think that it's probably just hard for her to really um, want to like maybe admit that I was just a better fighter. Was she so dominant and a good champion? 100%. I give her that. But she wasn't better than me, and especially that night. Yeah, no, fair enough. Um, last thing on this fight. If you win this one, uh, spoil Kayla's debut. The division's wide open. We've had title changes. Amanda's gone. Do you feel like you're right there? I mean, everyone's talking about what Kayla's going to be capable of doing, but what are you capable of? I'm capable of holding that belt again, and no matter who is there, um, even if Amanda was still fighting, I would want to get that rematch as well. So no matter who has the belt, I know that I'm still capable, strong enough, healthy enough uh, to be able to hold that title again. So that's my goal. Actually, sorry, one more. Um, what's your thoughts on Mike Tyson coming back to box Jake Paul? Um, I know a lot of people are worried about Mike Tyson. Some of them are saying, what about his age and stuff like that? But I think it's awesome. You only live once, and it's not like he hasn't been in there. He knows exactly what it takes to get in there. He knows what a fight is, and I love that he still has this passion that he wants to put out there, and I'm excited to watch him. I mean, he's still, he, he definitely is like, he's the fastest and most powerful at, uh, you know, being like a heavier weight. You look at his like actual like speed and power. Um, so obviously it's not the same as what he was, you know, <laughs> when he was in his prime, but I'm ex I wanna watch it. I'm curious to see how it comes. Holly, right here. Uh, looking back, I think before Kayla, you were really the last big like marquee free agent that they signed that was a female fighter from another sport, and you made your debut in LA as the co-main event mm -hmm. against the current champion, and then now Kayla's making her debut at UFC 300 against the former mm -hmm. champion. So I guess, what do you think is going through her mind? Like, because you're pretty much one of the only fighters that has done what she's doing right now. Um, 
from my mindset, I know the nerves that I felt going into it, but I still feel them to this day um, because I feel like if you, if you really don't care, then you, maybe you wouldn't be nervous and that's when you need to worry. Um, I know that there's a lot coming into it, not knowing exactly what to expect, but there's a reason why she's been at the top in more than one aspect of, you know, her journey is like, she's been in the Olympics and she's been in the PFL, so in, in order to be at the top and, and be a winner, she obviously knows what it takes. It takes hard work, it takes dedication, and and she's a strong athlete, so I'm, I'm expecting a, a strong, tough Kayla. I expect her to be the best she's ever been, and I'm ready for it. You said you always thought there might be a small chance that you'd face Kayla, but did you think you would be at 135 pounds, given that you know her career has been 145, 155? No, I, I definitely didn't think it would be you know this soon or at 135. And I never even put that much thought into it. I just you know sometimes I would watch and just think, hmm, wonder if her and I ever you know cross paths because that's happened a lot through boxing and MMA. I watch from the outside and I think, hmm, I wonder if I'll ever do that. And then you know, I did it. It's, uh, when I first started boxing, it's like, my wonderful ever fight for a title. And then I fought for a title and then three different weight divisions and they say 19 times. I don't even know what the, I don't even know exactly how many times I, you know, uh, defended and fought for belts. And um, that was crazy to me to think that. And then I said I wanted to be a champion in also MMA and I was the first female to ever do it. And the only, actually, I still think I still stand as the only one to do it. Um, so I definitely have that in me um, to want to just conquer whatever comes my way. And so maybe because of having so many opportunities that came my way that I wasn't really sure if would even happen, did happen, I think maybe that's why I always leave space for it. So I would see her fight and think, hmm, I wonder if I'll ever fight her. And was there any hesitation to take it at 135 considering you know, she's never made this, she hasn't made this weight in years? Uh, no, there was no hesitation. I feel like an athlete, especially a professional athlete, they know what they're signing up for, so I expect her to be on weight and be ready to rock and roll. Final one for me, two quick ones. Can I get your thoughts on the main event and then the BMF fight between Justin and Max? Gosh, Justin and Max, I feel like it's just, let's roll the dice or flip a coin. Those guys are so explosive and, and can win in, in multiple ways that it's just kind of, uh, I'm definitely excited to watch it. And uh, the main event, I mean, Especially with the bigger guys like that, you always wonder if and when a knockout might happen. So I feel like either of those fights is definitely going to be, you know, sit on the edge of your seat type fight. Holly in the back. Mm -hmm. We've seen you get ready for a high level judoka before. How much different was the camp and the approach to the camp for Kayla? Uh, these are very different camps. Uh, their styles very different, different stances, different... Uh, strengths, di different weaknesses. They're they're definitely two different fighters, and so there's there's a few things that I took over from what I learned with my you know training camp uh, for Ronda. But uh, this is a totally different fighter. I'm not fighting Ronda. I'm fighting Kayla, and she has her own her own strengths and things that we needed to really sit down and depict and um, or to pick apart, and that's what we did. And there's so many comparisons with the Ronda fight to the Kayla fight with them both being judo players. How much different of a fighter are you now from UFC 193? I'm definitely a different fighter now than I was at UFC 193. I learned a lot. You know, UFC 193, that was only my third fight in the UFC. Um, and I had some fights before actually getting signed with UFC, but not a lot. And considering that the very first time I even trained any mixed martial arts was for my first fight. It's like, this is how you get up. And I just repped that over and over and over. So I was still uh, fairly green um, with a lot of, you know, the clinch and groundwork and things like that um, when I first signed with the UFC. And I'm obviously, I was training and learning this whole time, but I'm, I'm better and more well-rounded now than I was back then. Thank you. Holly, just over here. Um, have you taken a look at the betting odds? Uh, Hull, or Kayla's like almost like a four to one favorite in this fight. And nothing's new there. I've been the underdog more than once. So uh, I think a lot of people just look at it. Oh, she's strong. She's been dominant, but she hasn't fought anybody like me. And that's the bottom line. Um, you mentioned Chris Cyborg. I believe she reached out to you and that's sort of how that came together. I also understand too that she was only supposed to stay for a little bit. She actually extended uh, time at camp. Um, is that something you see happening in the future as you two training together? 
I definitely see us training together again. It was, it was great to train with another champion. Uh, she's like-minded. She works hard. Uh, she's there to be a good, a good positive training partner. And the fact that, you know, you can get training partners that almost don't want to push you or, you know, you're too friendly. And then there's ones that want to go in there and, and, and go too hard. And you're like, well, I'm, I'm trying to get to the fight healthy. I don't want to have injuries, you know. She was a great training partner. She goes hard. She trains hard, um, but in a good way. And with the goal of this fight, you know, not, not there trying to kind of get her own gain out of things. You know, she definitely got good training while she was there too. It goes both ways. Um, but I definitely think that uh, we'll be training together again at some point. She must have also gave some good insight as well because it looked like her and Kayla were going to fight in, in PFL, so I'm sure she had a good understanding of her as an opponent as well. Was there any sort of strategy there as well too? Yeah, we definitely talked with them about what they'd seen and, and what, you know, just uh, I, I have a whole team. I've, I've got great teammates that have always been there. I've been with the same team my whole life, and obviously people have come and gone as far as teammates, but some have been there pretty much the whole time. And um, it was nice to have Chris there and just be, you know, they're with as well as, you know, training with my, my other training partners that I have, but also just kind of coming together and kind of just talking about the fight because she had been, you know, preparing for this and um, had already done a lot of, you know, kind of scouting on their own. And I actually think that they had talked about an exact date that they were supposed to fight. Uh, I know she was wanting that fight as well. So, um, but, you know, she's... Uh, Honestly, I've, I've never really gotten to really get to know her outside of just, you know, I fought her, competed with her, and then since then has been, you know, some things on, on social media, just, hey, good luck in your fight, or just responding here and there. It's not like, I, I'm, not like I've had a lot of in-depth conversations, but just a little bit of communication. And, um, you know, to be able to get to know her outside of fighting, um, I have nothing but positive things to say about her. She's a stand-up person and um, a, a positive person, so... I think she means uh, well in life with, like I said, inside and outside of the cage. And just last one for me. Um, the division's wide open, and, and obviously a win over Kayla would be huge, and you know, there, there's sort of uh, you know, a lot of uh, opportunities after this. I was curious, do you ever want to have a rematch against Misha Tate? Would you ever want to get that one back? And I don't know if that was ever even discussed prior to this fight. That was a fight that we had asked for, actually on multiple occasions, but it just hasn't come together. And I also don't want to just go out of my way if it's not something that is ever going to ha happen. I'm not, I'm not trying to grab it, just something that isn't even, I just don't want to put all my eggs in one basket and like get stuck on one thing. I, I want to go after who's the best. And so that's really my main goal. But I think any fighter, if you give them the chance to go back and avenge a loss, they're going to do it, right? So yes, I want to, I would like the rematch just for the simple fact that I like to avenge my losses. But also, I want to fight whatever path gets me to the belt because that's, that's who's going to be number one. Holly, back here. Um, was it tough watching UFC 297 just knowing that you, know, uh, you have two wins over Raquel and she went out there and just beat down Myra? There's a lot of frustrations when I see stuff like that. Um, but every fight has its own journey and there's little things that I've gone through here and there and you know, certain fights that I've been all in or, and, or had, you know, things that have, like, kind of had, you know, had setbacks with. And so it's frustrating to watch, but it's always on me. Uh, I don't ever look back and make excuses. If I've ever had something that, you know, wasn't successful, it's my own fault for not preparing, um, what, for not performing. Uh, my preparation has always been good. I always have the best teammates, the best coaches, and I'm always ready. Um, if there's anything that I fall short on, I, I take full responsibility. Um, but, yeah, that was frustrating. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going into that fight with Maida, but like I said, that's, I'm not going to sit here and make any excuses. And then to see somebody who I have been a victorious over holding the belt, sometimes it's frustrating, but also it's just a reminder that that's where I belong, and I'm still in this game. So you can look at it both ways. Thank you. Sorry, Holly, just two prongs off that. Right here again. Um, Myra obviously did pop after that, and the win was overturned to a no contest. When you reflect on that, do you like still look at it as a loss? Or like when you process that, how do you go through it? For me, a win is me winning in, in the fight. Um, it being a no contest, it, every fighter knows the rules. So when you get caught with something, that's on you and you have to live with that, but I'll never sit here and use it as an excuse, but I also 
Um, I just look at myself. It, everybody's responsible for themselves. She has to deal with her own self for, you know, taking something and popping. Um, and a lot of people, it depends on how they put it. It's, it. it's a banned substance for a reason. So that's something that she just has to deal with. Yeah, and uh, lastly on Raquel, um, I know you weren't thrilled about like the action in your previous two fights. When you think about maybe a third fight with her over five rounds, do you kind of dread that a little bit? You know, uh, my fights with Raquel, the, f the first one was my first fight in the UFC, and she was the most skilled at a lot of, you know, out of all the girls I'd fought, she was definitely the biggest challenge at the time. And going into that fight, Raquel can make, she can make a fight like messy. She can make it kind of like a dog fight, you know. So going into that first fight, my goal was to try and keep it clean and not get into a dog fight with her. But a lot of people are used to seeing that, so when they don't see it, they're like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if that, it's just not what they're, they were expecting. Um, and then the second fight I went in, a lot of what she was good at is being good in the clinch and, in, and, and making, if she can grab on you to make it a, make it a messy fight and make it scramble-y and uh, kind of make it messy, you know. Um, and I was able to keep it clean and dominate. So as much as other people didn't like the fight, for me, I was like, well, I, I was able to control this fight. And um, if you come from a background where that's your style, then it's good, right? You come from a background where you have knockouts and then you don't knock out, then they're like, well, that's not what I was expecting, you know? I think a lot of times people can go into fights with uh, already like a preconceived idea of how they feel like a fight should go. But um, the second fight, whether it be the most exciting fight or not, I dominated the fight.